This is Ann Holmes and No Sewing and Tea Quilted. We're going to show you today how to uh, do the thread painting on our Peace and Joy that we wanted to add to our banner. Working with uh, invisible thread is both a, a blessing and a curse. A blessing because you can't see the stitches and a curse because you can't see the stitches. The only way I could tell that I was really finished with this was to turn it over and look at the back and then mark a pin for, um, you know, hold it and find a place that I needed to add a little something. But uh, right now what we're going to do, we changed threads. We put white in the bobbin and white in the top and we're going to thread paint our letters through all these layers. The, the back and the batting all act as a uh, stabilizer. Okay, I printed out my uh, letters on the computer and then I put it on my copy machine and enlarged it to the size that I wanted. And now I'm going to show you how we uh, place this in a curved sequence. So I printed this out and made a copy in case I make a mistake. I don't want to have to start all over again. And you see I drew a safety line down here, a little space about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm splicing to that line on the top, just to that line. And then here again. And then I'll come up to the from the bottom. You have to keep a safety line there so that you, um, you know, don't cut it all the way through. Then you'd be placing individual letters. But by leaving that little string there, then I can come over to my curved shape and using some pins, I'll pin this, try to curve it around the shape in the way that I like. So we're going to try to find the middle. I can just fold this in half because I have the same spacing on either side. I can fold it in half and put a, a little crease there. It's almost on one of my cut lines, but I'm folding that there, and so that should be about the center of this. And I'm just going to eyeball this because it's about the center of this center line there. And I'll try to space it in the top and bottom about you know the way I wanted it, but that would be wrong because I have well, no, that looks pretty good. So there's my center fold. We'll just put a pin like that there and in the bottom and we're just gonna kinda eyeball that and then we'll spread, spread these out in a way that we like so we'll just come over here and we can each put a pin in the top of each of these things all right, now what we're going to do, we've played around with this till we got it centered uh, approximately the way we'd like it to. And now I changed threads. I put thread on the top and the bobbin. I didn't want to use my blue thread on the bobbin because I was afraid, you know, I'd have blue pops on the top. So I'm just using white thread on the bobbin and the top. And I'm just going to outline each of these letters then I'll pull the paper off and fill it in with free motion quilting. So right now, I'm just going to, um, you know, use the outside of these shapes with small stitches so that we can pull our paper out without uh, bringing the thread up. So we're just outlining um, the letter and my vision isn't that great but this is going to be just fine once we fill it in with free motion quilting. So I'm just going to come up here again, cut my thread and move to the next letter. 
I'm not going to fill it in while the paper's on there. I'm only using the paper as a guide for outlining the shapes of my letters. Rachel's now at our sewing machine, outline stitching our letters. And she's removing the pins as we go, so she's not going to poke herself. The pins help hold the letters in position. But it's nice to have a sit-down job and then a stand-up job. We have a quilt on our work table that we're just starting that we'll be making uh, future videos for you to learn all about this next project. Okay, so we've got Peace and Joy stitched. Joy is in all capital letters because we're joyous that this is almost done. Um, you can see the back where you can see the stitching. And we'll now use a pair of tweezers and pull out all of the paper here and then fill it in with free motion quilting. All right, now we've supported our quilt with the heavy end down here and used our suspension system to um, get some of the weight off the front. And I didn't like the original clips I put up here. They were too hard on my hands. So I've been experimenting with other kinds of clips. These are just for potato chip bags that happen to have big holes in it. So that works. All right, so now we're going to fill in our letters. I bring the thread up. And remember, I have white on the bobbin as well as on the top because I didn't want any bobbin pops to come through here. I want our letters to be nice and white so I'm just going to stitch in here like this a little bit to lock it and then I'll um, do that and now I'm going to put it on my zigzag stitch and you can vary the width uh, I'm going to make it just a little wider. I have it on 1.6. That's what I normally use. But for filling in these letters, I'm going to make move it to uh, two, a width of two. And so now I'm just going to fill it in like a satin stitch. I'm just moving it back and forth. I'll have it filled in the way I want. And you can go in many directions. And then I'm going to make it narrow for that tiny little uh, place. Or just put it back to straight stitching to come up here. And then I'll put it on my zigzag again and start filling in. I can go up one side. and down the other. Rachel's hard at work oh. <laughs> filling in her our letters. All right, these are the beginning of our letters. It's pretty intense to do this. We'll show you what it looks like on the back. Here our nice letters are going to be in reverse on the back, but we this way we have no bobbin threads. Uh, coming to the top if we use blue on the back. Thanks for watching us do the thread painting. Now I'm headed outside to pull some weeds between our spring showers. I hope you take a break and get outside too in this spring weather that is coming.